my name is Carol and I'm from Innovate Training and I am the creator and instructor of the SOAR program and today we're going to talk about moving from the classroom to the kitchen nook and this is actually uh, video two if you haven't checked out the first one then make sure you do that we talked about keeping a calendar and keeping a schedule so today what we're going to talk about is keeping a or using resources and if you are one of those students who have transitioned from a classroom model into an online model which is probably 90 percent of you out there because many of the high schools and colleges are now online so what i've done is i've taken some ex excerpts from the SOAR program to help you give you some tips on how to make this transition smoother. So today we're going to talk about resources. As an online student, you may not realize that you have more resources than you realize that you have. So as an online student, you might feel isolated from your class. You might feel like you're in it alone. You might feel like you don't have the same um, access to the materials that you would have if you were in a classroom. But I'm going to talk about how you can, um, how, what resources you can use and how you can access them. So, the very first one I want to talk about is um, the resource that you have right at home. And these are resources you can, you can put together or organize before your class even starts. And that is your support group. And what do I mean by support group? I mean, I mean a group of your friends, trusted friends and family that understand what you're doing, that you're going to school and that you're online and that you are trying to focus on your studies. And what you should do out of this group of friends is to find one or two really good trusted friends and Create them as your study buddy or your um, your uh, accountability buddy, and it's kind of like a cheerleader, um, but also somebody who can keep you accountable. So, a support team. Make sure that these are not your party friends. Uh, make sure they're not somebody who's going to say, you know, hey, you could study for your test tomorrow morning. Why don't we just go out and have a little fun? No, you need somebody who's going to be a little serious. Okay. Um, so you want to be you want to be trusted. This could be your spouse. This could even be your children or your parents or you know somebody who lives in your house. It's actually a good idea if, if somebody who lives close to you. Okay. So this one person that you're going to pick out out of this group is going to be the um, person that you're going to call on for um, three things. First of all your cheerleader, your encourager, your coach, the person that you're going to call on when you feel frustrated and want to give up. This person is going to encourage you to keep going because I know it's at times you just want to just throw in the towel, you just want to just give up because sometimes it gets hard. And again, we're, we're in a new mode, a different mode, and we're doing things differently. And you may have been going into a classroom since kindergarten and this is very new to you, so it's understandable that it can get frustrating and discouraging. Second of all is this person can be your watchdog. This person can answer the phone or answer the door and make sure that people are not interfering. This can be your kind of interception, in other words. Um, your friends that want to go party, say, and that person's like, nope. Yep, this person's, you know, you're not going to get close to her because uh, she can't go party today. Um, it can also be somebody who can help you with the kids. If you're studying, they can uh, maybe put on a video or play some games with the kids. And then finally, number three, this is your accountability buddy. This is the person that you have given that power to. So, in other words, this is the person that you would answer to. They're, they're going to ask you, did you attend lecture today? Yes, I did. Well, if you have to, if you know that you have to answer 
somebody regarding going to lecture, you're not going to want to lie to this person. You're not going to want to be false because, again, they're doing it for your own good. So he's like, oh, I better go to the lecture because I know he's going to ask me. So that's, that's a good idea to have somebody that you can be accountable to. You know, in the classroom, we have the teacher who's constantly in our presence. When we're online, it's a little bit disconnected. Not that the teacher's not holding you accountable, but it's psychologically, it's a little bit disconnected. So your accountability, buddy. Do you have your paper done? It's due tomorrow. You're not going out to party tonight because you have a paper due. And how did you do on your test? And maybe to, again, cheer, cheer you on when you do good on a test. Okay. So that's your first uh, resource. Your, your friends and your one person that you're going to trust as your accountability, your cheerleader, and your um, watchdog. Okay. Second resource. And a lot of people forget about this one. Your instructor. This is one of the greatest resources you have. And a lot of people think, well, we're online, so I don't have as much access to my instructor as I would if I was in a classroom. And that's actually not true at all. Your instructor will most likely give you their a phone number, a call number, and they'll give you a set of hours that you could best call. Now, be aware of this. A lot of times the instructor's giving you their cell phone. So you don't want to call during their, their own private time. Also be aware that your instructor might be doing other classes at other times. So they're going to give you some time. They're going to say, hey, you know, between 5 and 7 p.m., I'm available so you can call me. So be aware of that. And if you have to leave a voicemail, leave a voicemail. And be respectful. Understand that they're probably going to be get back to you within 24 hours. Okay. Personally, I like to do emails because I like to write it out, spell it out, make sure I've, I've included all the information I need to include when I have a question. Again, allow 24 hours. Unless it's a Friday afternoon, then you want to give them until Monday. Okay. So your instructor. Your instructor is, if this is, regardless of what the subject is, has been teaching this. They're the ones who know what assignments are due, what's going to be expected, and they, their experience. So don't forget to use them. They are a great resource that you have. And then another one is a study group. And your instructor may already organize a study group. But if not, ask your instructor, hey, do you mind if we form study groups? An online classroom is more than welcome to do this. You have resources available where you can meet independently. You can use Zoom to meet independently. So ask your instructor if he or she would mind if you you utilize uh, study groups. Now in study groups, what you want to be aware of is the different personalities. And remember, a study group is not a marriage. So if it's not working out, you could always find another one. Because again, when you get different personalities, sometimes you get personalities that rub each other the wrong way. You have some people who like to take control and that's fine if um, other the other group doesn't mind um, but again yeah a study group isn't a marriage so if it doesn't work out find another one form another one finally the resources that your instructor gives you on your in your online classroom I'm sure your instructor has provided links and downloadable materials make sure you go through all those materials Make sure you have your textbook. If your textbook is an actual textbook, make sure you have that. If it's a um, Kindle, an electronic book, make sure you have that textbook, obviously. But also all the other materials, your syllabi, your calendars, your, um, text, your, your, your uh, lecture notes, your PowerPoint outlines, all those things, you want to make sure that you download them and then keep them organized. If they're electronic, keep them on a drive in the file underneath that class name. Keep them organized. So those are valuable resources that you want to make sure that you have access to. Um, make sure that you, um, if you're having trouble reading electronic print like I do, I have to 
print my materials. So make sure you, you print them and keep them um, available. Um, sometimes instructors will have live events. Make sure that you attend those live events and make sure that during those teleconferences or the webinars or whatever they are, make sure that you take notes and download any of the resources that are available to them. So that's about it for this week. These are resources that are available to you as an online student. There are many, many more. Next week we'll have another topic regarding um, you, you being successful as an online student. So Carol Pajot from Innovate Training and I'll see you next week.